Well, hey guys, welcome back to the shop. Great to have you here. Thanks for coming along on part two of forging this 200 layer 5200 pattern welded steel skinning knife with uh, buffalo horn scales here at the end. So kind of digging this project here in the first part we forged a billet of 5200 and 15 and 20 steel to make a 200 layer billet and uh, forged a blade out of it, ran into a few issues, overcame them and you can see we're out of the heat treat and on to the finish grind. So the, the grind is really where you make or break a project a lot of the time. Whether or not you are super experienced on the anvil or in the forge as it were, you can take a blade to the grinder and promptly ruin it or really help it a lot. So the goal here is to do a flat grind, of course, and that needs to be one singular plane across the facet or bevel of this knife. On top of that, I'm doing a distal taper, so that means that the thickness of the spine is thickest about the middle of the knife, right around the ricasso area, and it uh, tapers down towards the point, and this also has a tapered tang, which I'm cleaning up here. So it's really kind of a very long, exaggerated diamond shape on the cross section. And what this does is, I mean, it adds a little bit of style to it as well, but helps reduce the weight and just the balance of the knife. So just working it down grit by grit, this is 120 grit here on the, uh, on the bevels of the knife here. Ideally, you would go up to as high a grit as possible to avoid excessive hand sanding. And since this is a Damascus or pattern welded blade, hand sanding is kind of important to get a nice etch, nice finish on it. I went up to 240 grit on this, on this blade here and it turned out pretty good. I'm pretty happy with how this project is progressing. No signs of uh, delaminations that we... Uh, had to deal with earlier in the project and you can see the distal taper and the tapered tang there. So now it's time for everybody's favorite part. Well, maybe not everybody's favorite part. Not really mine actually, uh, hand sanding, but uh, I like to use wind or Windex. Actually that's just straight ammonia that I refill it with, but it helps uh, your sandpaper cut and keeps it from um, building up with the uh, metal particles aids in the process and while I'm at it the best sandpaper I've ever found is Norton brand blue ice bar none I've used uh, probably well at least half a dozen different sandpapers and uh, this is the best stuff I found so I took it up to a thousand grit it actually looks kind of polished it's not polished it's just sort of shiny and now it's time to etch my maker's mark in there, the uh, compass tilted northwest. And just using a relatively primitive electro etching setup here, but it works and works pretty well. So get that etched in there. I like to do quite a deep etch so you can you can actually feel the uh, I don't know probably ten thousandths at least but you can feel the etch in there so it's not gonna come off anytime soon now I'm doing something that I actually have never done before which is buff a blade prior to uh, the ferric chloride etch for revealing the pattern and this is not necessary but kinda wanted to see you know what it would do you know basically when you're preparing a pattern welded steel blade you want to put the finish on it that is going to be on it after you're done etching it because the ferric chloride or whatever acid that's the most common that people use but you can use others uh, it doesn't it does not smooth the surface it simply etches whatever is there and of course in some cases it can make the surface worse so starting with a good clean and I'm cleaning it off with acetone there but smooth and up to an appropriate 
level of uh, polish even is uh, is a good idea. So I had it in this uh, ferric chloride probably three times I think and I don't know exactly how long. It's really going to vary. You just need to uh, make sure you don't let the oxides build up excessively. Keep that cleaned off so that the etch can continue to do its job evenly as possible and then once you get to the desired depth on your on your etch then you can finish and there's the there's the blade finished etched <laughs> I'm not going to show it to you yet alright so we're going to put the handle on this thing now it's getting getting close and I'm using uh, G10 handle liners which are my favorite handle liners I've used the vulcanized rubber liners in the past or excuse me vulcanized fiber uh, liners in the past and uh, they are not nearly as stable as the G10, for example. The G10 isn't going to shrink on you and maintains its color well. It's, in, you know, it's structurally just better than the vulcanized fiber. So there's our buffalo horn handle scales. You can see that neat white patterning on there. That's all natural. And then uh, presumably it's only on one side. I don't know how deep. But the first thing to do is get the tang side flat. We'll take it to the grinder with a 36 grit aluminum oxide belt. It's my favorite for taking off material, soft material quickly, I should say. And we'll finish it up on the granite block with some emery cloth. Buffalo horn is a natural material and it's uh, not static. It can uh, warp and move and bend on you so it's kind of another reason that putting all these pins in here is going to be nothing but beneficial and we'll get our three thirty seconds holes drilled in the scales using the tang as a template once I do that I can go ahead and index everything together with a couple of pins and I can prep the uh, front end of the scales So I actually drilled three 30 seconds holes for three 30 seconds pins, which if you've ever tried something like that before, you'll know that they don't actually fit. Um, the same size of pin doesn't fit in the same size of hole. But the way I get around that is to simply uh, rotate them on the coarse grinding belt, and it brings them down just a little bit in size and also provides a bunch of micro channels for my epoxy to bond with, so it's a win-win. Got the ends of the front ends of the scales all polished up, looking pretty sharp there if I do say so myself. And uh, we'll cut up, snip off a couple more pins. This is nickel silver pin stock, 3 30 seconds thick. And it's actually not silver at all. It's uh, nickel silver is a copper and, and uh, excuse me, nickel, nickel and copper alloy. So you might be wondering why I didn't just index a couple of pins and then put them, to, put the handle scales together and then add the rest of the pins and that's a great question because that's kind of what I meant to do and then I forgot and put all the pins on one side and then had to put the scale on the other side so anyway went together fine got the epoxy set up and we can start uh, grinding everything down and uh, cleaning this whole thing up one mistake I did make here that you'll see in a minute is I underestimated the, or I should say I overestimated the depth that the white whiskering on the buffalo horn was at. And I should have taken more material off of the tang side on the handle scales instead of having to take so much off of the outside to shape the handle because I lost most of the uh, whiskering on one side of my, my handle, which was kind of a bummer. but. Still looks pretty good. Just get this work down here with the slack belt a little bit, and then of course a bunch of hand sanding, make everything even, uniform, and smooth. So there we are up to 600 grit, and I could you could go higher, wouldn't hurt, but I'm going to go ahead and take it to the buffing wheel here and uh, carefully remove all the 600 grit scratches and uh, get it up to a pretty decent polish.
put a final edge or put an edge on this thing as a final step here and we'll go ahead and sharpen it up. You know, I, I know that uh, natural materials by and large are less stable than synthetics, but it's you just can't really duplicate sort of the warmth and luster of a uh, like a natural material like this buffalo horn here. It's, it's pretty neat stuff. First time I've ever actually worked with it, but I'm I'm sure I will again in the future. Get this worked up to a nice razor sharp edge for whoever ends up taking this home. So now it's time to go ahead and make a nice sheath for this knife. So in just a second here you'll see something that's interesting that I'll point out. That is the dispenser that I'm using to put the die on the leather. And I originally got it just to do like edges on sheaths, which I haven't really done a lot of. And I wanted to do this sheath in all black. Um, and find, come to find out it works really well to apply die over the entire surface of the sheath. So I actually went ahead and bought another one for my brown leather die. They're on Amazon, it's called an acrylic empty marker. Thank you. Yeah, I dropped that. You got one? You got a pecan? You want me to crack it for you? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, hold on. That's a tough one. Here you go. Here you go. You're welcome. Got my youngest daughter hanging out with me in the leather room here, which is a fun part of being able to work out of your house. So get some uh, beeswax on the edges here and slick those up create a, a nicer nicer edge on this. I've put contact cement around the edge as you can probably see and after it sets up a little bit we can put the sheath together here. Well, I used to spend many hours hand stitching sheaths, and uh, a while back I was gifted this stitching machine, so it's been a huge blessing. We get this thing stitched up here, and uh, we're getting pretty close. Use my leather slicker to kind of help form the leather a little bit to the to the knife. Really come to where it fits, almost like a glove. Nice, a nice custom fit, so it's not going to fall out. But it's easy to get in and out. I had just enough dye left in my dispenser here to finish this one sheath. I treat all of my leather sheaths with uh, Obanoff's leather oil and uh, since since my knives are made to be used I want the sheath to be very serviceable as well so if somebody's out hunting or out in the woods or just everyday carry I want the leather to be be able to protect the knife as well as possible and, and uh, last as long as possible too. Get the sheath finished up here and uh, show you guys some pictures of the project. There it is. Hey, appreciate you guys watching as always, and we will see you on the next video.